listen, your pizzas are better than your films, stop making films. I'm not telling you my secret, you come and take a bath with me. <laughs> you don't need the money. No, I need the money. Oh, you do? The bath oils are very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Bond. James Bond. So you're very kind. Yes, I had uh, uh, massive flops and they did very, very badly. And I was doing all of that. I was licking my wounds. <laughs> I was uh, not in... Uh, you know what I did? Yeah. For four years? Go on. I've never said this to anyone, though I've mentioned it, but today, here, I'll tell everyone. I learned how to make the best pizza in the world. That's what I did. Honest to God. I stopped listening to stories. I stopped wanting to tell stories. I found myself and made myself a small kitchen, and I started learning how to make pizzas. And I learned what you asked me right to begin with, perseverance. Because to get the perfect pizza, it takes millions of square pizzas before you're able to make it completely round. So I learned perseverance, and I will make the best, best pizza in the world. Can you? No. <laughs> I'm working on it. Next four years, when you don't see me. <laughs> but time. was it a difficult moment when your wife and your family and everybody said, will you stop making pizza? Go back to work. Was it difficult to know now is the time to go back? Yeah, actually, you know, there was always a toss-up. Um, I was very glad my family didn't tell me, listen, your pizzas are better than your films, stop making films. <laughs> so, so I was glad they turned around and said, no, as good as your pizza is, I think your films are better. They were very encouraging, especially my children, my team, uh, some of them are sitting here. And they said, okay, what you're going to do is uh, tell stories. And you know, I'd become indulgent. I'd started becoming too innovative. I was looking for perfection. And I started failing. I needed to look for excellence, I needed to be unique, but I needed to look at the audience, what they want, and I'd stopped hearing the crowds. I used to go where there are thousands and lakhs of people waving at me, but I wouldn't hear or feel what they wanted to see of me. You know, I was going there and waving, and I'm saying, whatever I make, I'll be innovative. So I did a film about a vertically challenged guy, I did a film about a manic, psychopathic fan, and I'm like, no, people just like to see me giving hope and happiness and love, so let's get back to that. That on Thursday evening, because our films release on Fridays, mostly, or Thursday evenings here in Dubai. So Thursday evening at home in Mumbai, I rinse myself with a two-hour bath and rinse myself of the work that I've done. Because what happens... Oh, hang on. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that bath. It's, it's a ritual, yeah. Is it a ritual? I mean, yeah. do you put special oils and scents? Do you have bath salts? Do you prepare with candles? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not telling you my secret. You come and take a bath with me. <laughs> Easy. I, I show. I'm an actor. I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> Should I take him up on his offer? <laughs> <laughs> you carry on, sir. <laughs> okay. No, but honestly, I, I do because, you know, I realize when you do a big hit film, it's done well and you're very happy and everybody's jumping around. Friday happens, Saturday happens, Sunday happens. And you realize this is a big blockbuster. But Monday, I have to get back to work to make a better film. You made a flop film, Friday you're sad, S Saturday you're crying, Sunday you're moping and you're not waking up from bed. Monday, you have to get back to work and start making a better film. So Mondays are for trying to make better films always, so you have to perceive it. Okay, but let me be crude. You don't need the money. No, I need the money. Oh, you do? The bath oils are very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's a legend. Aren't you? You're being very sweet, uh, Richard. Like I told you, I'm not a legend. I'm Bond, James Bond. I told you that at the backstage. Yeah. Say that again, go on. Bond. What's, what's your name? Bond, James Bond. Would you like to play Bond? <laughs> I'd, I'd really wanted to but I think I'm too short. What about Bond Baddy? Baddy, yes, of course, I'm brown enough. <laughs> Never wanted to be someone who's, like I say, uh, peddling love or, or seller of dreams. I wanted to be an action guy with eight packs and beat up people, be in a white uh, vest, 
girl on my side with the Glock in my hand and uh, speak in baritone and things like that. But I never got the opportunity. I don't know. When I started off, suddenly everybody started to think of me as someone who's, uh, uh, you know, promising hope, giving hope and spreading love. Uh, like I spread my arms again and again. So I think my regular film would be a film that gives you hope, gives you goodness, gives you happiness, and yeah. at the end of it all, lots of good songs. Yes, but you've also, if, uh, there's, a, there's a great YouTube video, four minutes of, uh, of your best entrances. Yeah. And there's a lot of action in them. Yeah, only entries, no exits. I just keep entering again and again. My kids get very, uh, you know, when I, uh, I have three kids and uh, whenever that video plays, and I have to tell you a secret, uh, we've compiled it from the office. I think it looks just very cool. It's not made by others, we've made it. So whenever a show like this happens, and if you allow me to show a video here, we'll show you me just entering some places and very dramatically and romantically. But my kids make a lot of fun of it. You know, whenever I get a little serious with them, they'll just look at me and say, oh my God, He's doing those entries from his video, S R K. So it, it does become. A do you want to give us a? Uh, oh yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Yeah, just, uh, you want to walk along? With your permission, sir. We'll. Uh, if it's okay. Yeah. 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 Go on. Go on. <laughs> Supposedly, 2011 DiCaprio never happened. Supposedly, allegedly, Slumdog Millionaire, you turned down, allegedly. Why hasn't the crossover taken place? I don't see why it should. You're a big enough name in your own uh, genre. But why has crossover not taken place? I've said this honestly, but nobody believes it. So I'm going to say it to you very, very honestly. Nobody's ever offered me any work, uh, crossover, of uh, substance. I may have had conversations with people. I know lots of lovely people from the West, from the English film industry, from the American film industry, but nobody's offered me uh, any good work. You know, I hear actors talk about, oh yes, I want to cross over, I want to take Indian cinema. I think I'm, uh, I still have to learn how to be able to deliver to the audience that likes me. And, you know, instead of spreading myself too thin. And then, yeah, of course, if you've not been offered a job, how do you take it? So really, I've never been offered a film in uh, Hollywood or in uh, England. Uh, yes, Slumdog was there, um, now that you mention it, and uh, I spent a lot of time with Mr. Boyle, he's very sweet. Uh, but I was doing uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire on television. Successfully. Successfully at that time, and I just felt uh, in the story that was being told, the guy who was hosting was very mean, uh, in the story that was being told. And I'm like, you know, I'm here doing uh, Slumdog Millionaire, and the guys who were producing the show wanted me to do the film. I just found it, you know, this guy's, uh, I was cheating and being dishonest as the host. So I just found that it's very strange that I'm being a host and I'm cheating in the film. So I explained to Mr. Boyle that I wouldn't like to do it, please. And they're way better actors than me. And I think Mr. Anil Kapoor did it and he was fantastic as the host.